Have you ever opened your lunchbox and found out your sandwich is not smelling good? Or maybe you've left a loaf of bread outside only to find that there are some growth on it, some powdery growth on it. Not good, right? Well, that happens when food isn't stored properly. It gets attacked by tiny invaders like microbes and pests and that's what we call food spoilage. But don't worry, we have come up with cool ways to keep our food fresh and tasty for longer. So when we talk about keeping food safe and sound, there are two similar concepts. One is uh, food protection and the other is food preservation. These two concepts go hand in hand. Food protection is all about guarding your food against microbial growth and infestation by pests. On the other hand, food preservation focuses on storing food for a longer period of time and protecting it from spoilage caused by internal factors. That's the difference here. Food preservation is protection against internal factors whereas, sorry, food preservation is protection against uh, internal factors whereas food protection is protecting against external microbial growth and pests. It's pretty amazing how these two methods work together to keep our food fresh, right? All right, let's see this in detail. So let's check out some methods of food protection. The first one is something that we use in our daily life. Yes, it's freezing. What does freezing do? Well, freezing our food in colder temperature inhibits the bacterial growth and can make food last for years. We use a refrigerator at home for this purpose and if the temperature is below minus 16 degrees Celsius, bacteria and other microorganisms cannot survive. Right, so these microorganisms then cannot attack our food. Pretty cool, right? Yes, that's why freezing keeps our food safe and is most common method of protecting food. Yeah, the next method is a really interesting one. It's called smoking. Yes, smoking, you heard that right. So what is smoking? It's a way of preserving food using smoke. Yes, that's it. It's that simple. Protein-rich food like meat, fish and cheese are preserved through combined action of heat reduced moisture and chemicals in the smoke and these chemicals are antimicrobial and antioxidant in nature what does that mean what does antimicrobial mean it means killing all the microbes and antioxidants these are substances that slows down the aging or decaying of the food right so that it will stay longer don't worry you will learn more about these substances in detail in your higher classes Let's see some examples of food that go through the smoking process. Yeah, this one is a smoked meat, which is already smoked, right? Yeah, it looks smoked. It's not burned, it's smoked, okay? The second one, this one shows the process of smoking. This here, the meat is undergoing the process of smoking. Fish is another food that's often smoked to protect it from microbes and keep it good for a longer time. And finally, yes, that's cheese. Smoked cheese is super common and is available all over the world and really delicious. It's also a great way to protect food, protect the cheese for preserving it for a longer period of time. Yeah, quite an interesting method, right? Yes, it is. In the next method, we use uh, insecticides for pro food protection. Melathion is sprayed on jute packs containing food grains. As you can see here in the storage area, the jute packs are sprayed with melathion. Now you might be wondering, what is melathion? Yeah, you can stop scratching your head. Melathion is a chemical insecticide that kills or prevents pests like insects and flies from attacking and multiplying on jute bags, which contains rice, wheat and other food grains that are very important for us. But here's the thing, it's not very environmental friendly. And it can be harmful to humans if not used carefully. So one has to wear all the protective gears while spraying these chemicals. Even so, it is still quite effective in keeping the pest away and protecting food for a longer period of time. So while it has its drawbacks, it does its job well in keeping the food safe. That also matters, right? Yes. So in the year 1864, a French biologist named Louis Pasteur made an important discovery. He noticed that microorganisms were spoiling beverages like milk, wine and beer. Back then, these spoiled beverages could be really dangerous to drink and could even cause death. Pasteur found out that uh, heating beer and wine to a specific temperature killed the bacteria that caused spoilage. And guess what? This heating process didn't need to last long. Just a short time was enough to kill the microbes. 
this process or this method of food production is known as pasteurization today pasteurization is super common and used in many areas it involves heating milk or other food items to a certain temperature for example the milk the raw milk or other food stuff is heated to 80 degrees for 15 minutes and then what happens then it is cooled down very quickly and this process actually kills kills microbes in the milk and making it last longer and here is the fact the milk you get at home is pasteurized milk yep the milk we use every day has already gone through this process to keep it safe and fresh for us to drink so so far we have seen the difference between food protection and food preservation or we saw the two similar concepts of food protection and food preservation and then we also saw some methods of food protection like freezing uh, smoking using insecticides and pasteurization now in the next video we'll be seeing that is part two we'll be seeing some of the methods of food protection like uh, using inert gas and radiation and also some methods of wood preservation. Stay tuned.